for that. I'm, I'm keen to see <laughs> how we lay grass. All right. In the meantime, I say we get Marlon in and talk what's new in trains. Cool. Come right. on in, Marlon. Welcome. Hey, Marlon. Hey, guys. Thanks for joining. Yeah, no problem. Now, What's got... news in trains? We've got a lot of news. Well, there's um, a big yellow thing right here. Big yeah, yellow banana. That's, it. that's a yellow fella. But um, yeah, I'm excited about looking and uh, working on our project a bit later. Mm -hmm. but that's going to be a bit messy. So we're going to do that, I think, probably towards the end of the program. Yeah, I is... think it's best if we do it at the end of the program. That way, when we've got all fur sticking out of our nose and everything and grass in our ears, it's, you know, all there's over my hands. going to be a lot of, like, um grass fiber oh so, fibers make a yeah. mess yeah, that's it let me feel the fabric of your fiber <laughs> we will be a little <laughs> bit later but um terrible i thought we'd <clears throat> talk about um t-class locomotives the what t-class t t's yeah they look like h-o they are but all three of them yes but that one looks so different but there are, third, there are three different generations of oh, T-Class. Nice. And I thought we could talk a little bit about... What is T-Class? So it is a locomotive designed specifically for Victorian railways. So these were among the first uh, diesel electric locomotives um, built and designed for Victorian railways in the 1950s. And these are three different generations. There's the first generation, second, and third. Um, and you can see those design differences. And I guess we can go through and sort of discuss... What they are and why that is. Please we have do. a look at the top. Yeah, one? for sure. So the the first one we're going to look at is a um, this is an Oscision branded uh, first gen. This is like a T1 they call it. T1. T1. Is. There we go. It's got number T342 on the side. You've got a crew inside, which is really cool. I love stand. it when they have yeah. crews inside. Otherwise, it just looks like a runaway train, doesn't That's it? That's right. <laughs> You've got one facing either direction, so these locomotives could be run either. Um, in the reverse or you know the rear or the front end this would typically be the front but how do you this, know um it usually just just kind of looks that way doesn't it i'm not sure but uh, this is what they call like a road switching locomotive i guess a road, um, switching, road switching, switching so the idea is that it's powerful and big enough to do mainline hauls but also small enough and with a good enough visibility in both directions to be able to perform shunting duties and large um, yard duties and things like that Right. Uh, so uh, this this is in a more modern paint scheme. Uh, it's yellow. It's very yellow. I don't know why it's yellow because it doesn't have any kind of um, owner or railway markings on it. But I believe it's a privately owned repaint. So this would be working probably any. It's art. really begging to be with it, isn't it? It's it really like... is. Yeah. It's it's just so vibrant. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that comes across on the screen, but the details are really nice. Saw these. You get a lot of um, just nicely. Uh, separately applied details handrails ladders also getting that um, closely. directional yeah definitely worth having a look at you have uh you know mu hoses so these are the hoses for um you know the air brakes or if you were connecting to another locomotive to have mm -hmm. a um where they like mu cables so multiple unit operations yep. so you can control multiples from the single cab and just really nice oxygen consistently produces beautifully made locomotives and uh, the detail on this is quite flawless, really. The yellow is hurting my eyes. It is hurting my eyes a little bit. Maybe we should put this one down and have a look at another. But, <laughs> but the uh, just so that you know, just to give our eyes a bit of a break. If you like yellow, this is the loco for you. Yeah, I mean these these notoriously, according to crews, had a very tight cab quarters. They're very snug. short, very snug. I mean they had this high nose which would house the loo for the crew when they how do you know that when nature called because i've seen inside of these i know it looks not nice, kidding wow. there are all, <laughs> most of these locomotives have a toilet on board do they they do absolutely usually in like the nose section somewhere in there you'd access it from the inside i'm almost certain. so so what generation is this one because this one's got the full nose i guess you call it this is this is a t1 so first, t1, first generation gen. flat top they call them flat right. top flat top because it's so you know it's got that flat, flat top. top yeah right. there we go let's have a look at another one okay Pop that on the Are track. you putting it on the track so we can play with it? Later on, we'll play with that oh, later. Right. Uh, this is a um, the big zooms of your hand. T two. T two, which this isn't is a, a T two at all. So T three six six. Second gen. Second gen. This is actually a power line model. So a different manufacturer this time. Um, but yeah, similar, similar locomotive. Just a second generation. They um, address the problem with the cab. The only real notable difference that i can see on the outside is is that they've they enlarged it they kept the the height of the hood itself 
the same, but they gave the um, they gave the crew a lot more headspace and also extra windows on either end. Okay, Probably so nice and bright. Nice and bright, extra visibility. Wouldn't yep. be uh, as aerodynamic though, you wouldn't think. Probably not, but these didn't really travel at tremendously high speeds usually, and um, it's more of a form. It's more of like what do you call it? Like form over function, or it's just a very like starkly functional design. Hmm. Um, you've got these nice um, lift rings on top. So for maintenance, if these went you into a big workshop, out. you could take the toilet out, um, change the roll of paper, you know, <laughs> in there. Um, but yeah, the idea was that you could lift these large sections of um, what they call the hood so that you could access like the generator and the, the diesel engine inside. It's cool. You can see all the way through on the, um, oh, you on can the grill. Yeah. A mesh. So again, superbly <laughs> detailed locomotive. In V-line colors, so this these colors would have come into um, come into view in the early '80s, mm -hmm. probably through to the '90s, and um, this is when the V-line was a freight carrier as well as a passenger carrier. It was still nationalized, uh, but yeah, lovely example. And that's that's the main difference. And let's have a look at a what's here, a T3, T3, and again, this is a um, another power line locomotive in the more traditional. This is what the um, the original ones, how they would have been painted right. in the um, the VR blue and gold scheme. Yep. That one is, has an even better visibility, but, no, but no toilet. It's much, much narrower toilet. I guess you have to really crouch into that one. I'm you not, have to crawl not into sure. the toilet. <laughs> but um, yeah, that's as you can see, that that um, increased visibility and, and um, comfort and for crew, it was, became increasingly important over time. Well, it wouldn't be comfortable if they had no toilet. No, not at all. But I guess just in terms of just... Back when I was shoveling see. coal, we didn't have toilets. <laughs> Didn't you? Nope. So what'd you do? What do you think the shovel was for, mate? <laughs> I see. All right. Had an onboard incinerator. <laughs> well, you know what? In a way it does, I guess. Yeah. <clears throat> but yeah, just having a look at the detail on this... um. It looks quite similar to the last generation that we looked at, minus a few of those exterior changes. Hmm. Lift rings aren't quite as prominent, I don't think. They kind of seem to face a different different direction compared to the other the other T classes. But yeah, I mean those those it's because these were a tripping hazard when you yeah when you're up there on the top. Around, yeah, they were quite a tripping hazard, so they moved them to the side. That's that's a quite so a nice they, tidbit. They had the same um, you know lifting capabilities, and you could also put. Um, you know, chain and rope along there to help you walk along it. Is this while it's moving or while it's stationary? I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> right now, ideas there, haven't you? But yeah, um, if you're if you do model Victorian railways, um, and you want like a small, multi-purpose diesel locomotive that's mm. kind of compact, and especially a model that's good value for money. It's not going to go on my lap, um, is it? No, it won't fit on yours because it's, it's like 009, a... so it's not not quite the right double size. O, but double O, awesome. But I feel like, yeah, if you do V-Line or Victorian Railways, even now, because they still have these locomotives operating now in, in, in various parts of the state. I can't believe how heavy they are. Do you want yeah. proof? They're well ballasted. Yeah. Did you want to, I think BJ is closest to the controls. Do you want to give the Oscision um, <laughs> yellow fella a bit of a go? <laughs> Doesn't make noise, does it? Are these ones got a decoder fit in? They don't. They're all they're all DCC ready, except for this. This is a DC only. There you go. <laughs> how smooth does it run? And quiet. Awesome. And it hasn't been run before either. This is the first time I think anyone's run it. Uh, I might have run it before. Have you? Uh, oh. Before. I, I run it in. Well, you did a good job. No, I didn't actually. Did. Good low speed running. So for, for a layout where you have a lot of shunting, um, you know, moving moving goods, um, wagons around, that's the kind of performance you want to look for. Is it? It's pretty slow, yeah. isn't it? And you can see it. And you can. That's it. It's you won't yellow. miss it. Just moving now. Just. Did it stop? Stop. Yeah. Bit more power. Maybe there's a, a dirty spot. I'm going to put my finger here because I'm scared he's going to drive it straight up onto the floor. Oh, you can trust me. I'm a doctor. Oh. He's got that funky switch. Here he goes. Here he is. We've got the dodgy controller. Well, do you approve? I certainly do. I think it's really good. Super smooth, super quiet. Yeah. Can't hear it all. Does it come in red? Possibly. I mean, they've they've produced, Oxygen in particular, have produced this locomotive in just about every paint scheme that these were available in throughout their very long, pretty much 70 year, 70 year history almost. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And um, yeah, practical workhorse even today. 
So there you go, the humble tea class. Brought to you by Marlon. Like it. Nice. You like right. it? Yeah, it's good. So it sounds like you guys have a lot to talk about. We've got a fair bit on today, haven't we? We have. And we're super excited to have you back on. We've got to get through it quickly so we can get you back on to do our That's the, it. The, the, the little layout. We've got a lot of scenery. Because you promised me that it's going to take 15 minutes and I'm dubious. Well, we have we have to we have to <laughs> You know, I'm dubious at your 15 minutes is not the same as my 15 no, minutes. No, no, my I think we live in, in sometimes different time zones in that respect. But we've got a plant vegetation and it has to grow and that takes time. Fair right. enough. All right. There we go. Anyway, thank hey, you very beautiful. much, guys. I'll see you in a few minutes. Sure. Thank you, Marlon. All right.